how repeatedly reaching out repeats your pattern of abandonment. This is true in 32-year-old Brianne's case. And you will hear in this episode how she understands that in the beginning, she gets a lot of interest from men. But then in her words, she harasses them right into a repetition of a pattern she wants to break. In this episode, we go into why that is for her and how she breaks her pattern of repeated abandonment by repeatedly reaching out and not giving a man space so that he can come towards her in a way that creates the most desire for any man so that he wants the commitment that in this case Brienne desires. We get into all that so stay till the end. It's a great episode for you to hear if you have dealt with anything like this situation that Brianne outlines so well in our conversation. So without further ado, listen, learn, level up, and let's get right to this interesting episode with Brianne. That was very helpful. And in fact, I feel like I'm definitely in a better place now after having this conversation with you because you're right. That's what I think makes your work different and better than others. I definitely don't think I'd be engaged to him or in the relationship I'm in if I hadn't listened to you at all. Sick of sacrificing or settling in your romantic life? Welcome to Make Him Wonder with Coach Paula Grooms where women struggling in real relationships ask the expert. Unscripted, unfiltered, understandable coaching conversations to help passionate women succeed in love. Hi there, and welcome to Make Him Wonder. I'm your host, Coach Paula, a dating and relationship coach for women, licensed social worker, and author of the book, Why Won't He Commit? How a Man Decides to Make You the One. I coach you to find a potential Mr. Right, get an ex back, or grow an existing relationship with a man you truly desire, and learn how to inspire his continued interest for the relationship of your dreams, so that you level up to the complete commitment you totally deserve. My guest today is 32-year-old Brianne, who is currently on a break from 42-year-old Carl. Brianne says that it's a pattern of hers to have men be very interested, and then she harasses them into walking away. Carl is no different. That when Brianne doesn't get what she wants, she texts and calls too much, telling Carl what he has done wrong. Brianne has been a follower on social media, stating that my rhymes have helped her so much, but she reverts to her old ways and messes things up. To make matters harder, Carl is in the military and is away a lot. He has yet to make Brianne his official girlfriend, and not having that title before he next leaves is making Brianne highly anxious and feeling insecure. Brianne wants to know what to text or do next, as she wants Carl to be her husband and the father of her children. Welcome, Brianne. Thank you, Paula. Tell us, how did you meet Carl? I met Carl on a dating app. And how long have you been dating? We've been dating for about three months. And you're already on a break after three months. What happened that it was such a short period of time and you're on a break? I have honestly always struggled with relationships. I, to, to be quite blunt, I, I harassed him. I, I pushed him, uh, really, and really nitpicked a lot of the things that he was doing, I felt like I wasn't getting enough attention and I harassed him with calls and texts and it's quite embarrassing, but that's the number one reason uh, why. I see. I appreciate you being so vulnerable and open about that. That's going to help you. Tell me specifically when you say that you harassed him what, what do you mean? Give us an example. Tell me how many texts or calls or what were you doing? Probably a little too embarrassed to say the actual number, but he doesn't like to be on the phone. He's always the one to call and reach out. So I will say he's taken the lead and I have not texted him first or called him first. Sometimes after he, he calls and it's a maybe three 
four-minute check-in call, which is, I think, also a habit of his being in that he's in the military and he's very direct. After a five-minute call, I am a talker and I want to talk all about my day and I want to be on the phone for 30 minutes, 45, an hour. And an example would be he called to say goodnight and he was tired, he had been working, he had a long day and he just wanted to call and say goodnight and then he missed me. A a great, great thing. I had felt like I had waited all day to just talk all about my day and he just really was tired and wanted to go to sleep. And so I had blown up on him and said, you know, why I want to talk a little bit more. He said, Brian, I'm really tired. Please just let me, let me go to sleep. I hung up on him. And then I, I proceeded to text him uh, reasons why I was upset. Not sure that's the best example, but to give another example, I guess, where he told me he was heading in to have dinner with a really a a client of his. And I was upset again that really it was a short phone call and I needed to talk. And he was right about to breach the door to sit down with this client. And he said, "I'll, I'll give you a call later. And so I I waited. He didn't call me. So I I waited a couple of hours after texting him angrily. He, I'm sure, did not want to call me. So I called him, let's say, five times. And at that point, he didn't call me and he didn't text me back. And I just uh, wanted a, a response. I understand and I appreciate what you're saying. And as you're saying it, what are you feeling when you're telling me? Well, like I had mentioned before, I I don't want to get upset, but I have struggled with this in my past relationship where the same thing happened. And I initially, when I first began dating Carl, we, we both discussed not bringing past hurts into this relationship. I had mentioned my past was it was a rough relationship and I I was up front with him about that and I asked if he could have patience with me and he had said that he could and but not to have me project you know my past onto him but I think what you had asked is how I feel and it's so embarrassing and it is something that I'm well aware of and not only am I aware of it my family is because they've They've kind of been with me throughout and they know how much I struggle with it. Just understanding, understanding men and uh, how to give space and how to not chase. I don't have a problem, I guess, getting men or having them attracted to me or like me, but I really struggle with when I meet someone kind of just handing over my life and thinking it's going to grow from dating to marriage and in, in, I just say weak. I think I put a lot of pressure and expectations on my partner or who I'm dating. And the good news is that this is not about him and he is not the cause of it. You are identifying that it is you and in your control, you have ultimate control over this. And that means you can change it. You can change the trajectory of your romantic life. You can change this with him. That's good news. Yeah. This struggle is about your early life and absolutely nothing to do, believe it or not, with men. It presents itself and shows itself in your life through your romantic relationships. But it actually has to do with what happened to you in your baby experience from birth to age seven, whereby you were learning what you had to do to get your love and attachment needs met. Here's the problem, that the programming that you had is expressing itself now, but about what you intuited, felt, and had to do as a powerless, non-intellectual non-rational, non-experientially knowledged being, a baby, birth to age about seven. This programming is only expressed through our romantic relationships because it's about love. 
And so that's just an overview of it and the why it keeps happening in every one of your relationships and why you may feel out of control about it when it is happening. Does it feel out of control when you're doing it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Intellectually, you might even be checking yourself when it's happening, knowing that it's not going to be good. It's not going to serve you. Definitely. I um, have been um, been well more aware of it, I, I guess, as I've really started to date this, this new, new guy, Carl, because I find him to be a great catch and I don't want to go down the same path again. I want to figure it out so badly. Well, I'm so glad you're here because you can. And that's the good news because I'm hearing that he liked you from the start. I'm going to ask you first about this break that you're on before we get to kind of what the relationship was, the kind of the meat of it before this break. But the actual parameters and boundaries of the break, are you talking, texting? What is this actual break? He had come over a week ago, we had actually discussed becoming official boyfriend and girlfriend. I had mentioned to him that I, I wanted that title and I, I actually embarrassed again. I, I gave him an ultimatum. First I said a month and he laughed and he said, wow, I, I have a full month. And I said, no, no. Okay, you have three weeks. And to figure out if, if you want me to be your girlfriend because he quite often was teasing me and saying, you know, when are you going to be my girlfriend? Are you, do you think it's going to be soon? He kept teasing me. So I, I gave him the three week ultimatum. We both knew the date. And this was actually at this point, it was well, a week ago. And that week harassed him. That it was a Friday night. And that weekend, he, yeah, I had apologized. He had forgiven me. And we had a date that coming week, which we tried to work through ways for it not to happen again. I had mentioned that I am, I'm sorry that I called you this many times. You don't respond to that. Would you just shoot me a good night text just so it brought me some type of security? And he had agreed to it. And some, somehow I found myself again do it, doing it again. So he had come over on this past last weekend and well first um, again he's in the military and he had mentioned to me that things had changed and he needed to talk to me meaning he had been offered a position to he might be leaving sooner than he had originally thought uh, which was always the case when he came over and he was telling me about the changes. I was upset and I still really care about you and I really still want to make this work. And he said, Brian, I, I need a break. And I said to him, we're not certain how much time you have. It, it could be a week. It could be two weeks. It could be a month. But I, I feel like time is all, all we have right now is to spend as much time as we have together. And I said, I don't think uh, no, I, I don't want to give you a break. I don't think that that... I said, if you care about me, why can't we just start fresh? And he said, uh, Brian, this is why I'm asking for a break, because I do care about you. And I have a, a big week coming up where I have this kickoff for the new military job that I'm taking. And if this week, if you affect that, or you upset me, or we get into some type of disagreement, then I will be done. I, I won't want to continue this. So I'm asking, I, I'm telling you, I need a break in order for uh, me to take some space from this and, and think. You know, I, I said, okay, I, I understand. And he left. Uh, he didn't stay over that night. Probably it was the hardest, been a really difficult week for me. Um, I knew that I could not reach out and text him or call him, and I needed to respect what he said, and I was happy to do it. And so I heard from him two days later. He reached out and asked me how I was doing, and I learned from things that you've said, Paula. I, I, I got the text message, and I, 
pause and I let it sit and I responded. Actually, I was listening to a podcast today and I'm not sure if I should have responded at all, but um, I responded and said, you know, I didn't ask any questions. I, I said, I know you also mentioned saying statements. So I said, I'm thank you so much uh, for reaching out. I really appreciate it. I'm doing okay. And that was all that I said back. And I didn't hear anything throughout the weekend. And I did reach out over the weekend and I sent him a text message, one text message. And it basically said, I said, hi, I miss you. And I hope that your kickoff week went well. I think I had said I would like to, without reading it, uh, my text message directly, I, I said, um, that I still have feelings and I care about him and to not leave me hanging for too long because I still care and I still have feelings and and that I would I guess that he will reach out when he is ready. And I left it at that. And he actually got back to me, well, three days later and said, I'm working right now, but I will try to give you a call tomorrow night and I hope that you're having a good day. So that is the last communication and waiting for his call. And I'm not really sure what, what to expect. Okay. So you right now, as we speak, are waiting for this call tonight? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. We have a lot of work to do to get you ready in case he does. You're at a make or break moment. Now, I didn't respond to his text saying that he was going to give me a call. And that was also something I, I wasn't sure how to handle, whether I was supposed to respond and say, okay, um, looking forward to the call or hope you're having a good day. But I chose to just step back and not respond and and trust that he's going to call. Okay, this is a step in the right direction. As a teaching moment for anybody listening who might be in a situation like that, what do you think he would have felt if you just hearted his message? Um, that's actually something that I thought about doing also. I'm not sure. Um, I, I'd like to say I think he'd appreciate it, but I also, I don't know. Our first instinct is usually the one, the answer that's right. And yes, he would have appreciated it, but it's more just it would have given him a good feeling about it without words. Mm -hmm. He sent that today, that text? Yes. How long ago now? Um, about six or seven hours ago. Okay. So given your situation, I don't want you to send the heart now. Do you know why I say that? Um, no. Uh -huh. Why, if it were an hour ago, even two, would it feel different than six hours ago, do you think? I think it would now look as though I had waited on purpose. Yes. And almost like a prompting or reminding him or something like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why I say, don't do it now. And because you have been very forthcoming with us here and said that your behavior has been, your word, harassing. You want to err on the side of not doing. If we Monday morning quarterback this, it would have been much, much better for you to not have sent the message you did over the weekend. You likely know that, but you were compelled, anxious, correct? Very anxious. So we want to get to what you do now, but first we need to go over a little bit more about the relationship, meaning the good parts of it. Did he talk to you about making things official before that, meaning girlfriend, boyfriend, that he wanted to get married, that he wants children? I mean, he's 10 years older than you. Is he saying he's ready? Yes. He has often brought up the future with me, telling me that he feels like what we have is very special. I, I didn't believe when he first said it to me because he actually has been, and this is not something I've said, he, he's actually been engaged, he's proposed twice, and been in two five-year long-term relationships. And we had briefly talked about why they had ended, and both of them were 
due to his career in the military, both women did not want to move where he had to go, which was overseas. And so he has mentioned, I guess, one, the one he had mentioned was, well, actually, I think his his last uh, relationship was not someone that he had proposed to, but they were together for five years, and he had mentioned that the breakup was not a great breakup, but that he had ended it. There wasn't much passion there, and there were better business partners. And he had brought this up because he said to me that he felt like we had something very special and that he had never felt as passionate before and that he saw a future with me. He he actually has also mentioned he met my, my parents actually recently, a couple of weekends ago, and really had enjoyed that. And yes, we haven't talked fully marriage, but he said to me, I, I know that I know what you want, Brian. I know that you want to be married and, and have kids. And, and I he said, I want the same thing. And that he has brought up his age and said that he is not, he's, I'm, I'm 42 and I am not looking to waste your time. I'm looking for a partner. And he had said to me, I, I'm hoping that you're the last person that I'm going to be kissing and that you're the last person that I'm going to be doing this with. And he has definitely talked about future things and brought them up first. So I do feel as though we've talked about wanting a future together and what each of us is, I think, really looking for. He has mentioned enjoying waking up beside me and sleeping with me and not in a physical way, but just he said that he's never felt so close to somebody by just waking up next to them and he I could do that every day with you okay this tells me he has fallen for you intellectually do you know that to be true yes and I feel that because I feel like I feel the same way and I feel like I can really trust him which I have never been able to really feel that way before. Like I said, I have struggled in previous relationships with with jealousy and much more when I was younger. But he had said to me, and this is kind of how I, I really realized how serious I was about him. He had said to me that he would tell me whatever I, I needed to know and I could ask him anything. But he really didn't want to discuss past relationships especially mine. He didn't need to know anything about mine. But if I needed to ask him that he would talk to me, and I had always in the past consumed myself with somebody's past and who they had dated and what they were like. And he had said, I I really want to just focus on you and I. And that was, I just remember that was the first time I had ever thought to myself, I mean, I'm I'm dating a man. I'm not dating some a boy, and I want to give him that, and I want to, he is 100% right, and the only way that I think him and I have a real future is if I listen to him, and I just focus on him and I, and it, it brought me excitement. I was really excited to feel that way, and not think about his, what he had told me about his exes, and how much he had traveled with them and just all these things. I There was absolutely no doubt in my mind that he was serious about me. Okay. So it's just more evidence that he is someone that can go the distance if you make the changes you need to make. I um, I'm so aware of this and I'm hoping that I have another chance because I think I've really worn him worn him down. Yes, you have. But he's still being gentlemanly. He's still there. And if you make these changes and you make them quickly, you can have this. I can tell you how to do this. I can help you get it. You have to be committed to doing what will work. And this entails two big things that have to be worked on. And I'm going to tell you what they are in a moment. I trust you're enjoying Make Him Wonder. 
and that you're getting a lot of helpful information for the life of love you desire and deserve. So if you're not part of the 80-20 Wonder Club yet, you need to be, because now Make Him Wonder is exclusive, a members-only club to listen to every episode, past, present, and future, in full, all ad-free. The 80-20 Wonder Club is a Make Him Wonder membership that gives you all of seasons one, two, and three in a categorized list by age and relationship status and a multimedia library of my content, including my book, relationship evals, and my Mechanics of Men Mindset Manual, a weekly action step you can focus on to attract and keep the man of your dreams and have him committing to you completely in the coming months. Make this the moment you start living as an 80-20 Wonder Woman because love, like life, is best lived in 80-20. When you do 80% of what works with men, the 20% you don't won't much matter. Join the 80-20 Wonder Club by going to the 8020wonder.club. Don't miss out. Go now to the 8020wonder.club. You and your man will be glad you did. So we're back with Brian, 32 years old, dating 42-year-old Carl, but on a break. And from what you outlined, Brian, you are really at a breaking point and a make or break moment for you. Because if you turn things around and Carl experiences the turnaround, you can have this. You can have all that you desire with this. I'm not hearing that you can't if you make those changes. But I can tell you for sure, if you do not, you will not have what you want. Intellectually, I think you know that. You know that you have pushed him to the brink. And if not for truly being in love with you, he would be gone. Yes, and that is actually something that um, he has said that he he's loved, that he loves me a few times. Mm -hmm. I was surprised. <laughs> you were surprised? Yes, I I was. I was. Not um, the, the first time that he said it, I, I was surprised. Okay, so let's get to the meat of this, because you don't have one moment to waste. You said he's leaving shortly. How long until he leaves? Yeah, I, I don't know, but I'm thinking it could be as soon as two, three weeks to a month, but okay. I'm not positive. Regardless, if you follow what I'm about to tell you, you get it and you can begin to do it. You can turn this around. Are you working with anyone like a counselor? I have in the past, but I am I am not currently. Okay. That's good, actually, because this work entails you working on your programming, and we don't want you doing a lot of talking about the problems in your relationship, the past that you just outlined to me, the not right actions you've taken in the past, being hard on yourself, going over and over this in your head. That will not help you. That will hurt you. You have to start working on the programming that happened to you. And we can safely say there's something, and hopefully you can shed some light on this, that gave you the feeling that you were not worthy, good enough, lovable as you were. Something in your earliest experience programmed your subconscious to feel that you will be left, you will not be chosen, and that you cannot trust your love interests. What do you think that was? Well, I think you said, Paula, it would, would have had to be from early adolescence up until, I think you said, seven. Not adolescence, baby. Birth to age seven, when there is no conscious awareness there's sometimes no words, no vocabulary. What is put in the baby, who is the most vulnerable being on the planet, who from the moment of birth looks to these two people, generally a mother figure, father figure, and is programmed their worth of being loved, which is only translated as an adult to a love interest. What I mean by that, is I bet in your life, your work life, friends, family, you don't suffer poor relationships like you do in your romantic life. And you certainly don't have the angst, anxiety, emotional upheaval in those relationships like you do in your romantic relationships. Is that true? Yes, that's true. This is par for the course. 
because our programming is only about our romantic lovability, okay? Now, we're talking about this area of life. There can be other programming related to your worth to receive money, educational level, athletic ability, any other ability. That can happen as well. But what we are talking about is your programming about lovability, love, receiving it, giving it all of it. So there had to be something happen. And again, not intentional by the caregivers. Almost never is it intentional, but it's from the perception of a being, meaning a baby, that has no experiential knowledge, no intellect, no vocabulary, no education, nothing. And as babies, our mere survival depends on our lovability. There's a reason that babies emit a smell that we connect to a baby and why that smell is so wonderful to us. It's actually in us as human animals to have that happen so that a baby is helped along to be taken care of. And I mentioned that as a sense, the smell, that's one primal example of a host of things that go on. And we are talking about the psychological realm of the baby coming to understand their worth and lovability and their attempts to get it, what they must do. We add in the biggest part of it that whatever happens to us in our unconscious life between birth and about age seven, that's why they call seven the age of reason or the age of consciousness, because we come into an awareness that we are separate from others and we are not the cause of everything. Before that, no matter what happens to us, we connote as we are the cause. So if your parents withheld love, you didn't get attention, you didn't get affection, they transferred the feeling to you, and again, not intentional, that for you to be loved, you have to be perfect, you have to be pretty, you have to be smart, you have to be whatever. And it's different for each and every one of us. But make no mistake, from what you are doing now, the programming is there. And it is why your intellect cannot override your acting out. You're feeling compelled to do something. These are feelings you actually had as a baby. Now, you can't remember them because we don't remember any of it. But the turmoil, angst, and the degree of feelings were there as a baby and very young child needing constant love and attention from caregivers. Constant. And I don't mean you in particular. I mean every baby, every single baby. So you've got to change the programming. And I have certain ways that I like to work with that. But one way we cannot change that programming is to discuss and talk about the problems and the current issues we are dealing with in a therapeutic setting. So since you have done some therapy, that's good. You might now have the knowledge of what happened then that caused the programming. Now we have to work with the programming to change it to what you want it to be, that your intellectual mind knows would be best to be, and knows your real worth and value to a man. In other words, I bet you know your attractiveness level, your uh, educational level, and ability to meet him head-to-head intellectually, and in terms of your being fun, and having your life together and being able to offer him marriage and children and all of that. I bet you know all of that intellectually, correct? Yes. So we've got to get your subconscious to align with that and stop acting out your programming, okay? Yeah. Make no mistake, it's not what happened to you in previous relationships 
what happened to you in previous relationships was simply an outgrowth of your programming, and it's why you continue to do it. There is nothing as profound as programming, and no one gets around it. We have to reprogram our subconscious mind to calm it down, to make it know that we're worthy, to embody the state of being that we want as a calm, confident woman. And you can do that. On the flip side, then you need to do what is appropriate with him, given what has been done, and show him that you are changing and you are fixing this for you and that he will not be the recipient of these things because you are fixing it for you. None of this had anything to do with him. There's nothing that he did wrong. You were stating that you didn't get enough time with him. Is that right? That's what it said in your introduction. Yeah. Was that in person? Was that on phone calls? Was that he didn't text you enough? What was it? Um, that was mostly with phone calls and in person. He phone calls, he um, the length of phone calls because he's done nothing wrong as far as he, I want to say in the beginning, he was calling and texting me that he missed me two, three times a day. And he is busy with his, his job right now. He not only works for the military, but he also does construction on the weekend. So he has been very vocal about really being busy. And he has said, I let me figure it out. I will figure it out and I will make time for you when I can. But I need you to understand how busy I am right now. So I was wanting more in-person time. And I did say, well, you must, if you can't make more time for me, you must not really care for me. Mm -hmm. And that didn't make him very happy. Well, I want to know what you think about having done that now. I really can only just admit at how understanding I wish I would have been and appreciative of the time that he did make work for us. Mm -hmm. But you see, you couldn't because of what it meant to your subconscious mind. That's where the acting out comes in. Do you understand what I mean? That just made so much sense. Fantastic. It's all it is for every single one of us. And if we were working together, what we would need to do immediately, you see, there's a big trust issue here, again, that has nothing to do with him. Something in your zero to seven experience caused you to be programmed in your subconscious mind not to trust. Now, this isn't going to be in your consciousness in the same way. For example, jealousy is a big one. Where does that come from? Some people are, some people are not. And when people are, they feel that it overcomes them, that it's uncontrollable. This is a very good example of an experience whereby from birth to age seven, the baby was put in a position to be looked past. Maybe other children were chosen, something else was chosen, and it was in the child's awareness, so to speak, that they were not being chosen. It's easy to see that and why then as an adult, even when the adult in their intellectual mind can discern, oh, my partner is actually not doing anything, but they're overcome with jealousy. Our subconscious mind is like a devil drug. It acts out on us despite our intellect attempting to override it unless we do very conscious work towards getting in there and deprogramming it and programming it to what we want. And there are really only two ways to do that. That would be through a hypnotherapist who would actually do this kind of work, which if anyone knows and is listening and knows of a hypnotherapist that does this kind of work, I would love to know because it's very very hard to find, almost impossible, because most hypnotherapists only do things whereby it's an immediate, tangible, results-based, tested kind of thing like smoking cessation, being able to fly, weight loss, short-term, and able to be proven 
quickly. This kind of work to reprogram what we are talking about is a lifetime continual practice. It's almost a lifestyle choice, if you want to think of it that way, psychologically. It has to be in our conscious awareness, and the work has to be done kind of like, say, yoga. In other words, you don't just do it for a year and say, I practice yoga. No, you continually practice. And that's what we need to do. And every expert in this space, every guru says the same thing. It is a consciousness, new way of living that must come over you. You can change this absolutely, no doubt in my mind, once you've been made aware of it. And once you do the work with sleep meditations, which get into your subconscious very quickly, and daytime mental diet changes, how you think what you think, consciously thinking, not letting the programming run your life because it's running in your subconscious. Second thing, of course, is how you're going to interact with him immediately and continually. And I'm absolutely going to tell you about that. And immediately what you're going to do tomorrow night. So the easiest way to start it is for you to understand The things have to be taken down a notch. And Carl has to start to feel safe with you. What I mean by that is that right now, with your emotions, he does not feel safe and secure. He never knows what to expect. He is blindsided. He can feel bombarded, even a little stalked. It's extremely disconcerting. Does that make sense to you? Yes, um, it it hurts because it's it's so true, and I it hurts it hurts to hear. And um, I've you know even my my family members, uh, especially just using my dad as an example, has just driven it into me into my head. And like I said, I've just I've so desperately wanted to change this and figure it out and I have I'm so aware of it I just can't seem to figure out how to tweak it how to change okay what did you make of what I said about the subconscious it makes so much sense when you well first when you said about the devil being your subconscious and changing your thoughts during the day I think you said your your diet your thought diet, because that's something that I actually have been trying to work on. Obviously, it hasn't been enough, but there are many things that I'm actively trying to just to tweak it in. And the the part about just my subconscious taking over, it really clicked when you said I haven't been able to fix it because my subconscious has I haven't reprogrammed. It it just, it wins every time. It does win every time. That's right. But we're going to stop that. Okay. Now we get to how you interact with him while you are doing that. Okay. Because he's not to be part of that. He didn't cause it. He can't fix it. You didn't cause it either, but you can fix it because it's your subconscious. What happens is we keep putting it onto that adult love interest time after time after time until we get this and work on it and change it. In the meantime, it's how you are going to interact with him. And that is pretty formulaic to help him feel safe and secure that you are working on you to fix this because he knows it has nothing to do with him. He can't fix it. It makes him feel powerless, but he does know that if it doesn't change, he's not sticking around for more feeling unsafe, for more feeling that whatever he does is wrong, more feeling that he doesn't make you happy. He doesn't even get, well, if I make her so unhappy, why is she still hanging around? Why does she even want this? You see, it doesn't make sense. He actually said that to me at least twice now. Mm -hmm. Of course, it doesn't make any sense to him logically. So here is what you do starting right away. If he calls tomorrow and if he doesn't, because there's a good chance he won't. Does that shock you that I say it? No. Great. 
So we're going to go through the two scenarios of what you do. If he calls, if he doesn't. And it's like a script. It should be brief, but you should write it out. And it goes something like this. Wondering what I'm going to tell Brianne she needs to say to Carl should he call and what she needs to do if he doesn't? In the rest of this episode, I outline exactly what will be best for Brianne to say when she speaks to Carl and how she will need to continue to interact with him so that he feels safe and secure to continue and eventually to commit. And because I want you to free yourself from your past that is hurting you in your present relationship, I invite you to check out the 8020 Wonder Club, where you can hear the rest of this episode with Brianne, where I give her my approach and coaching on what she does from this moment on. The 8020 Wonder Club is an exclusive membership only club of the Make Him Wonder podcast, where you'll get over 200 ad free episodes categorized by age and relationship status plus all new episodes the moment they're formatted and ready to be aired. Unfiltered coaching conversations like this one, with all my advice and principles to have you succeeding in your romantic life. The 8020 Wonder Club also includes my Making Magic with Men Mindset Manual, a weekly video series of mindset and mechanics practices for you to do at your own pace. Join monthly and cancel at any time, or save by committing to a six or 12 month membership. And not only will you save by committing to more, you'll receive a full coaching intensive experience where you'll be talking to me in a conversation like you just heard. You choose the date anytime during your 12 months and I'll be answering all your questions on getting what you desire and deserve in your love life. Check it out at the 8020wonder.club and join us. As that is the only way you'll be able to hear what I tell Brianne so she begins to feel more secure and how that will make Carl feel safer so that he is inspired to commit. Don't miss out on how to make your man wonder in the right way to have the right results you want in your relationship or how to start dating in a way that guides a potential Mr. Right to do right by you. Go now to T H E eight zero two zero. W-O-N-D-E-R dot C-L-U-B. That's the 8020wonder.club. You and your love will be glad you did.